Hi, my name is Abdul Rahman from Maple Systems, and I'll be going over the hex to ASCII ladder logic instruction in this tutorial. First, let's go over to an empty subroutine and hover over the conversion tab. Now, let's place the hex to ASCII instruction on the first rung of the empty subroutine. Now that we know where it is and what it looks like, let's go over to screen number one and place the appropriate ladder logic subroutine on the right of the screen. Notice the subroutine. When the B200 coil turns on, the hex to ASCII ladder instruction executes and converts the hex value from operand A and places the equivalent ASCII value in operand B. How the hex to ASCII ladder instruction works is generally simple with a bit of confusion. First, let's analyze the screen. The register D210 is used for a hex input. The box underneath it is the binary representation of the hex value. So both have the same address but it is represented in two different ways. Let's click on the hex register and see its properties. The tag address is D210 but the data type is a hexadecimal. Now let's look at the binary numbers properties. The tag address is the same D210 but its data type is a 16-bit binary. When I press the convert button, the hex value is converted into ASCII value. We are representing the register D230 and D231 in three different forms. In the ASCII form, in the hex form, and finally in the binary form. The reason why we have to registers allocated for every one hexadecimal register is pretty simple. Let's bring ourselves up to speed with the decimal, hexadecimal, and binary values along with the ASCII characters. The table we see on the screen is the ASCII conversion table. Notice all the characters in this table. Most of these characters are on our keyboards. Let's look at the character A. Character A has a decimal, hex, and octal value assigned to it. And where we have a decimal value, we have a binary equivalent. Each character in the ASCII table is assigned an equivalent decimal value. So a computer can differentiate based on the numeric value rather than a character representation because a character representation is easier for people to understand but a numeric representation is easier for the computer. As we can see, the last character in the ASCII table is a decimal value of 127. Let's pull out our handy calculators and determine the binary equivalents. It's 1111111 and that's 7 bits. So no matter what the character is, we need at least 7 bits to represent it. Mapware 7000 uses 8 bits to represent each character. So a 2-byte data register has a total of 16 bits. So we can store two characters for every one 16-bit register. A hex value uses less space than an ASCII value. The maximum single value for a hex is the letter F which represents the number 15. The number 15 in binary is 1111, which is 4 bits. Since each data register has 16 bits in it, we can store a 4 hex value in one register. That is why for every one full hex represented data register, we need two ASCII represented data registers. Now let's go to screen number one and analyze the objects once more. 
So when we enter in a value for the register D210, say A, B, C, D, and press the Convert button, each individual hex values will convert to an equivalent ASCII character. According to our ASCII table, A equals decimal value of 65 and hex value of 41. B equals decimal value of 66 and hex value of 42 and so on. So A, B, C, D is in the hex form of 41, 42, 43, 44. But remember that the ASCII value must be stored in two different registers. So A, B or 41, 42 is stored in register A or D230 and DC is stored in register B or D231. Registers A's decimal value is 16961 and a binary value of 10000100100001 and register B's decimal value is 17 475 and the binary value of what you see on the screen. Now notice the value in the ASCII register. It's BA instead of AB. And that's because we decided to use the byte order of high to low instead of low to high. This option can be changed in the register's properties. And this concludes our video tutorial. If you have any further questions, please contact Maple Systems or visit us online at maplesystems.com.